for the past 20 years, one lady has become world renowned for her unique jewellery making, fusing traditional methods with a contemporary style. She's the last practitioner of an ancient craft and she holds the secret, for she knows how to make something that nobody else knows how to make. And I'm here to find out what it is. From rings to pendants and from bracelets to brooches, these aren't just pieces of jewellery, they are glittering works of art all based on the elements of nature. Rachel, tell me about your unique designs. My designs are based a lot on nature. So they might be an element put onto a chain. So this chain has got some thorns, so sometimes they stick out and they're all sharp and spiky and sometimes they lay down flat. And then we've got one here which is like a seed pod where we've literally got silver seeds that are sprouting 18 karat yellow gold and that links it all together. And then we have our daisy chain. And this is probably the most represented piece that I have here that does actually look like a daisy and they're linked together like you would put a daisy chain together. And the centre of the daisy is done with granulation, which is one of the most ancient techniques of melting metal into little balls and then soldering them all into position. Is it true that you have a unique piece that only you can make? Yes, I do. I've got two. Let me show you. Ooh. So this is the pod ring. So it's got a silver outer shell and on the inside are 18 karat yellow gold little seeds. What it does is it raises it off your finger so it's almost as if it's hovering. People like to move it around because it creates a really nice sensation when you twist it. And it's got 10 little diamonds on the inside as well. Now the unusual thing about this is I'm actually hiding and concealing the most expensive bit of the ring. So all the gold detail on the inside you can't see until you literally take it off and show it to someone. Wow, that is so intricate on the inside. How long did that take to make? They take absolutely ages because the, the technical side of making that piece, when you want it to fit the person who's going to have it, I need to work out the outside dimensions. I need to work out how many little seeds need to go on the inside and what size the seeds are. It really does float. It's like a massage as well, <laughs> a hand massage. That's amazing. Very clever. So this design here is called Tundra. <gasps> That's gorgeous. It's based on landscapes, like the Tundra landscape, the idea of snow drifts and ripples and all the different textures that go on. Um, some people say it looks a bit like chocolate and I can imagine how drizzled chocolate might have got into mm -hmm. my thought pattern. That's gorgeous, actually. I can't get it off, sorry. <laughs> it's going to have to stay on. I'm not joking. <laughs> Hang on, there we go. That is truly amazing. But the question is, how did you make them? I can't tell you, because it's a secret. But I can tell you how I do other things. If we go through to the workshop, I can show you. So this is the blowtorch which is going to get our piece of silver nice and hot. It will go through colour changes. Wow, so that is going to be piping hot. Yeah. So the molecules inside that bit of silver are now running around and expanding. <gasps> and the surface area gets bigger and bigger. Oh my god! Oh no. <laughs> it's going to roll up. Where so that's it now <laughs> 700 degrees. So that's gone up to 700 degrees centigrade. Oh, wow. Mm. Hold your hand out. Oh, no, is it going to be hot? <laughs> 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 oh, sorry, I'm really sorry. I'm <laughs> such a child. Each piece can range in value from £30 to £30,000, but I was determined to find out what was the most valuable item in the store. 
But before I found that out, I learned that some items have a high emotional value too. We have been asked in the past to do pieces um, that are going to be left to children and sometimes in the very sad scenario where somebody is unwell and they know that they're going to be passing away soon, they've asked us to produce pieces that they can leave for their loved ones. Um, so we've done um, signet rings with the family crest on and then little secret messages inside so when the boys grow up they'd have a ring that's got a message from their mum so they always know that it's there. And how did you feel when you were making those? It is really sad. It is sad, and obviously when you're working with the with the client as well, you know, they're telling you things that are really personal, and you become knowledgeable of that, and you're kind of you know what's going to be written on the inside of the ring as well. So um, it's lovely to know that we managed to make it real and last forever. But um, yeah, it's uh, not always the most joyous of occasions. What would you say was your most prestigious job to date? I'd say that was um, a piece that was I was asked to make for the Queen Mum for her 100th birthday. And what was that? That was a brooch based on a fishing fly and it was to represent her love of fishing. So it was created in precious metals and diamonds and stones. Do you have anything similar to that? What I do have is the sample which I would have shown to explain how it was going to turn out. This is it? This is it. Wow. So you've got a pearl, black pearl at the top sapphires, rubies and emeralds. You've got black rhodium plated wings here and a yellow gold at the top and a yellow gold feather at the bottom. Would you say this could be the most valuable item in the store? No, I'd say the most valuable items in the workshop. Let's go and have a look. Okay. I've been waiting all day for this moment. I don't know what's going to arrive. I'm a bit suspicious though. Rachel, the suspense is killing me. <laughs> Here we are. Hey! <laughs> What's that? These are our moulds that we make of the pieces. So we'll spend weeks and weeks making something and then we produce a mould, which means it's far more economical for us to produce that piece again. So between you and me, what is the secret? How did you make those pieces? The tundra. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Even no one else knows here how I make them. When they come in, if I'm working on them, I literally throw a tea towel over the top of my work. But to this day, nobody's ever known how I make them. So that is Rachel's signature piece. It is. That's Rachel's secret. Well, I wasn't expecting that. Hidden camera. That's what I'm going to do next. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't find out the secret, but what I did find out was there's a lot more to jewellery than I suspected. From the inspiring elements of nature to the ancient secrets used to forge these beautiful masterpieces, Rachel Jeffrey has crafted items that are inspired and infused with passion and emotion. But don't ask her how these works of art were made, because only one person knows, and she's not going to share the secret anytime soon.